Perhaps you're a little bit curious about how to format a spreadsheet in Excel. You have your numbers there, but how do you format it to make it look nice? That's the purpose of this video. Just as a summary, and you could always rewind the video to come back and look here again, you would format the main title with Merge and Center and Title Style, format the title, subtitle with Merge and Center, and then either modified title style or format it yourself, format the column headings in Heading 3 style, maybe. I'll show you how to make a two-line column heading. And then the totals row uses total style. And for currency, you do the first row and the last row with a currency or dollar sign format and the interior cells with a comma cell format. Let me show you how to do all of those things now. Here I have a spreadsheet that has already been typed in. There are formulas. If you look here on the formulas bar, do you see it? There are formulas already entered for the columns and the rows. That's not in this video. You already have to know how to do that or go watch another video. What we're going to do is format the title row. I'm going to put my mouse in the middle, in the center of the cell. Click and drag across all of the columns that are included. And up on the Home tab, on that ribbon, in the Alignment group, find Merge and Center. If you're using a different version, it's still on the Home tab. You might have a different picture. You might not have words or whatever. It's going to be very close. And then over toward the right on the same ribbon, it has cell styles. You may see some of them. I don't. So I'm going to click the drop down, the More button, and I'm going to choose Title Style. Now, if you didn't like that, you could always change it, but I'm giving you a place to start. We'll start with that. I'm going to do the same thing for the subtitle row. You cannot do them at the same time. You must do them separately. And I'll merge and center that. And I'll use title style again, although, you know, doesn't look good for the subtitle to be the same size as the title. So let me just decrease the font size a little bit. Maybe that's okay. You could change the color. These aren't even bold, so I'd, I'd probably be messing with it a bit more, but that's the idea. For row 3, even though A3 has nothing in it and frequently doesn't, I will include that in my selection. I will select, don't click on the number 3 because you'll select over to infinity. So just select the cells you want to include. And for that, we'll use the cell style of Heading 3. Looks pretty nice. See, draws a line under everything. It's good. And for the totals row at the bottom, we'll use a total style. That was all pretty easy to do, wasn't it? OK. Now then, uh, on this San Francisco, it's kind of a long word, you could make it a two-line heading. There are two ways to do it. If you're typing it, then you might type SAN, and then look down at your keyboard now. Find the Alt key. I'm using my right hand. Press Alt, Enter. Alt, Enter. Now look back up at the screen, and do you see how it looks like it's down in the next row? But there's no line there, so it really isn't. So I'll type Francisco and press the Enter key, and it made me a two-line heading. Okay. If it had already been typed, I could go up to the formula bar up here and click after the word San and press Alt-Enter. It does the same thing. San Francisco. Mm, you, you could, if you wanted to, uh, center those, perhaps. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, uh, the uh, formulas, I told you down here in this section, if you're following my homework sheet, how you would make them, but that's not part of this video. What I wanted to do is just to show you how to do the formatting. When you have sets of numbers, the first row of numbers 
selected. After you select it, look down at your keyboard with your left index finger. Press down and hold the control key. Control key. Your mouse gets a little tiny plus on it. I don't know if you can see it. Select the second row of numbers or column, whichever. Let your mouse and your left index finger up. And you have now selected two rows of things. And we're going to choose for both of those rows the currency style, which is the dollar sign button. Or you can click those words up there, general. Click that and, and click on currency. This says accounting style, but this works fine. Okay. Notice that when you select two rows, the first row is all gray or blue or whatever color yours is. And in the last row you choose, the first cell of the last row is white. Makes no sense, I understand, but that's the way it does it, just so you won't be surprised. Now, the interior cells, all the ones that are in between the first row and the last row, we want them to be set up like currency but without a dollar sign so they would have two de two places past the decimal and put a comma in the first three numbers and so on I'm going to select the interior cells and for those if you look up here I'm going to use the comma style comma style so I'll click comma style and what you see is how they kind of lined themselves all up and they added the commas in there and the cents and all that, but no dollar signs. The reason no dollar signs is it's, it gets too busy if you see a dollar sign everywhere. Let me show you the difference between this currency and accounting. Uh, let me select those again. Do you see how the dollar signs and these are all over at the left margin? You see? If I change it to currency, watch, you watch now, watch. Now the dollar signs moved over so they're right beside the numbers. This is called floating, floating format, whereas the dollar sign is fixed format. Eh, for me, I don't care too much, but probably if you use that dollar sign that gets you the accounting format, that would look nice. And be sure to save your document when you're done. Next, what we'll do, if you watch the next video, is create charts from our spreadsheet.